Hey, how y'all are ya? My name is uh, Jackson Dion. I'm the executive director of the Indigenous Wellness and Training Society. And today, what we're going to look at is a process of change. So, what I was, uh, so we kind of like lost connection with a little bit of our elder, Ray. Uh, he had to go to Saskatchewan or something, do some kind of totem pole raising. Elders these days, eh? So anyways, uh, so in this presentation, we'll look at uh, the process of change. At least we'll start the uh, discussion. So in order to make the transition from active re addiction into recovery, we need the change. So in this presentation, we'll look at 10 aspects of change and strategies that we can use to implement the change. We'll lo also look at what change means and basically three main issues that arise as a result of that are in the, um, what they're debating in like, uh, the field. Anyway, so we'll look at, yeah, the definition of change. Three main issues regarding change, 10 aspects of change, strategies that we could use to implement the change. And we'll, um, we're technically supposed to end with a small discussion about how can we arrive at solutions. But since this is a, not that venue, normally this would be a workshop, then we would be able to do that, right? So what is change? Change is, uh, according to Webster, is to cause to become different, alter, transform, or convert, basically to undergo an alter, alteration to pass from one phase to another. The process of alteration or variation, right? So other variations of change are basically alter, vary, modify, transform, and convert. So it's, in a sense, becoming different. Like if, if we're here and we want to be in recovery, active recovery, we need to change. So I don't know if you've ever seen a... Like when I think of change, what what comes to my mind is like a, a butterfly. So if you ever seen a butterfly, it all starts with the eggs, which are very tiny to microscopic and generally, but not always, laid on the underside of the plants. And eggs may also be deposited near the area in which a host plant may be found. Condition arises when specific host plants have died off in their season season end and the eggs are required to overwinter in order to take advantage of the following season's crop. So depending on the time of year, the eggs are laid and will dictate when the eggs are predetermined to hatch. So basically the eggs hatch and as a caterpillar, their appearance can even be more diverse in their final stage as a butterfly. They could be like naked, hairy or have varying amounts of bristles or spikes like appendages adorning their tubular form colors range from dull bland singular colors that serve as camouflage to mixtures of bright stripes or blotches that serve to warn saying don't eat me and throughout the larval stage a caterpillar has to shed its skin several times in order to accommodate further growth so those sheddings usually happen an average of five times and spans two to four weeks after each of those transformations, it's possible that the caterpillar can be different color or appearance from the time before. What that means is even the caterpillar in that stage, when it starts out within two to four weeks, can look different several times, just the caterpillar. 
And when the final instar, the shedding, occurs, that emergence is a pupa, which when completed usually resembles a part of the plant they are on, serving as camouflage. That stage may last a week or so, at which time the final stage, an adult butterfly, is produced. They might overwinter at this stage and emerge the following season to complete their task right. So in any case, the transformation while in a pupa stage is truly a miracle. What emerges from this case is in no way resembles a caterpillar that produced it. Basically what happens is a complete disassembly of the cells that made up the caterpillar and the reassembling of those cells into its new form, a butterfly. Upon emergence, a swollen body immediately begins to pump fluids into the shiny, tiny, tiny shriveled up wings. Within a couple of hours, the wings are full-sized, dried, become more rigid and are capable of flight. In terms of recovery, we need to completely restructure our self-awareness. You know, we're the only creature on earth who is aware that we're aware of our awareness. Meaning that I could project myself up into the corner of the room and look down on myself and imagine how I'm feeling right now at this particular moment. We need to restructure our imagination. Our imagination is able to project ourselves beyond this present moment right now. So what am I going to do at dinner time? How am I going to act? How am I going to behave? What am I going to do next year? What am I going to do three to six? See, so we're projecting ourselves beyond our current state. Ask yourself, actually, I love that line in Gladiator. You know, two weeks from now, I'm going to be doing this harvesting, stuff like that. Imagine where you will be, and it will be so. So where are you going to be in two, three, four weeks, a month, three months? Three to six months is a good bite size. Like if you begin with the end in mind, such as Stephen Covey suggests, that's great. So that's the end. And what he suggests is achieve that goal, that accomplishment. One week at a time is a great bite size. Dale Carnegie likes to think in three to six months. So that's a bite size, you know. Whatever your bite size is, just imagine yourself doing it and it'll be so. And another way that we could restructure ourselves is our conscience, like knowing the difference between right and wrong. Tonight, today, they're having a some kind of vigil uh, for the missing and murdered Indigenous women, like for me as an Indigenous person, and I look at all the things that have happened to us as Indigenous people, we need, really need as a society to define really what's right and wrong. Is that wrong? To me it is. But So what's the right thing to do? That's a physical aspect, right? So doing something right, what's the right thing to do? For me, I kind of like live stream. I do this. I try to raise awareness, try to educate, try to um, train mentor and provide service giving back i've always tried to give back that I, to me is the right thing to do to get to a point where you could get to that point it doesn't come overnight you have to work at it <laughs> and stay working at it and once you reach a level and a plateau you'll gain a little bit more freedom and uh yeah so what else do we need to restructure is our independent will, so our ability to act free of all other influences. So if we work on ourselves and give back to a level of service, that then we'll reach and achieve a, a freedom, free of all other influences, and that's a scary place to be. You know, in our addictions, I think that's what we wanted to achieve but we never did. We're always dependent on the addictions. I know I was. If I wanted to express myself, if I wanted to have courage, if I wanted to do things I normally wouldn't do, not under the influence, addiction gave me the courage to be able to do that. So I was dependent on the alcohol to be able to, it was like, it was like my superpowers. 
But today, I'm a little bit more of more freedom. I'm able to uh, move about more freely, free of all other influences. Now, that's a second step. And that's where I want everyone to get to, so that the third step would that be we be all be working together. Right now, we're not there. I could see, you know, I mean, they're doing that event, but me as an Indigenous person, an Indigenous male, if I wanted to go down there and support it, um, basically there's three main issues centering around change, like how much does our nature, our genetics, and our nurture, our experience, influence our development, nature versus nurture. Is development a gradual, continuous process, like an escalator, or does it go through a sequence of separate stages, like the rungs of a ladder? Does our early personality traits persist throughout life, or do we become different people as we age? So those are three main issues that are centering around change that they're grappling with and stuff like that. So the 10 aspects of change is all behavior are complex. We'll go through these one by one. Change is frightening. Change must be positive. Easier is be being is easier than becoming. Slower is better. No more. Do better. Change requires structure. Practice is necessary. New behaviors must be protected. And small successes are big. So the first one, all behaviors are complex. The way we conduct ourselves becomes very involved and tangled, making it impossible to get free or be solved. Our behaviors affects our health, our psychological aspect, our career, our family, social, community, financial, personal, and spiritual. So what we need to do is break down the behaviors into smaller units. If you just want to see how complex addiction is, go to your local library and look at all the books regarding addiction and recovery. Break down each part of your day by day on a daily basis. Look back through the years. What happened before we used? What happened before a party? What happened before we go out? What happens before a more specific event like birthdays, anniversaries, holidays? What happens during an event? What happens after the event? You can take larger chunks of time such as before addiction, after addiction, during addiction, now, after recovery, Welfare Day, GST, stuff like that, you know. Break down all these component behaviors of addiction. Because the reason that is change could be frightening. We, we usually avoid change because we don't know what's coming. Like in right now, I'm in a period of change myself after 25 years of recovery. So I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going down. I keep praying, but that's just me. Um, and I felt that fear when I first got into recovery. I didn't know that there was a life after addiction. I thought I'd basically just be twiddling my thumbs in the corner, not doing anything. But now, today, I'm so busy that it's almost overwhelming busy. And there's so much opportunities and because of independent will I could take my time but it's it's challenging and another reason that we don't want to change is that we can't teach an old dog new tricks I'm still learning every day or or we don't know how to change or it takes too much effort but that's more of an excuse it's not really a barrier so what strategies if, if change is frightening what strategies can we use And examine the consequences. We could prepare observers and be realistic. So what are the results of your addiction? What are the results of recovery? Compare the status quo with our desired behaviors. You know, when I started out in addiction, I wanted to express myself in a certain way and have the courage to do that. When I got into recovery, I wanted to do the exact same thing without the addiction. So what's your desired behavior? Early on in recovery, some of us want lots of years of sobriety with all the benefits. 
what we have is not very many years and hardly any be benefits. So that's a gap. This is what we want. This is what we have. We could label that gap as a problem, but what else could we label it as? What else could we label our addiction? For me, the addiction was a detour. New behaviors frighten people, so introduce change slowly. Let your friends know what you are doing. Let your family know you'll be going through changes. Let them know you will go through periods where you'll be extremely angry and not know why, because you will. That's one of the keys of recovering, figuring out what makes us tick. Some people say, just for today, or live in day-tight compartments, meaning, you know, the baffles and uh, the Titanic. There is a baffle here, baffle there. So the water doesn't get into that compartment. Well, there's a night and a night last night and a night tonight. So that's a daytight compartment. Live from dusk to dawn, basically. Live moment by moment. But we don't have to completely shut out tomorrow. We can set plans or goals for tomorrow. And, do, and these do not need to be set in stone. So be realistic. Like I mentioned, a good manageable time is three to six months. What will your life look three to six months from now? Create a vision leading an intentional life three to six months at a time. Vision is powerful. Leading an intentional life is very valuable. Wake up with intention. What's my intention? Because before in our addiction, we didn't have any intentions. Some other changes, frightening strategies are set breakthrough goals. Breakthrough is an action of breaking through something that is stopping recovery progress or achievement, right? So what we need to do is just like break, <laughs> break through that barrier that's holding us back, you know, because it is like, and be, so if you want to change, if you want to move from, if you want to become altered or become different and go from here, that, whatever our addiction into active recovery, then just break through all those barriers, even if it's our mind, our past, our family that's holding us down or anything. You know, create a castle. Castles are places of protection from an invading enemy, a place of retreat. The enemy is our drug of choice. Castles were offensive weapons built in otherwise hostile territories from which to control the surrounding lands. They are often built for territorial expansion and regional control. So a castle was a stronghold from which a lord can control a surrounding territory. Hostile territories were spent most of our time drinking or using. So if you've drank and used in the downtown east side, and that's where you currently live, uh, you could still do it. Just create a castle. Your, the, the castle becomes a sanctuary where you'll be able to defend your recovery. And castles, though, evolved into a residence for the monarch eventually. See, the king or queen or lord who built them. So make it a place that you as a king can reside and live comfortably. Make it your sanctuary. Change must be positive, so take heart from the experience of others. I went there, you know, a lot of people have gone before me into recovery, 30, 40, 50 years. I've heard about it. Keep your goal before you. Predetermine your mind to success, saying, okay, I'm going to get into recovery, and don't use it as a prop yourself up, but just say that I will succeed no matter what. Why? Because... I stayed in my addiction for a very long time and I became successful. I was a successful alcoholic. Otherwise, I would never have stayed in my addiction for so long. Seize every opportunity to practice recovery. I don't know if you know anyone else who has had an addiction and is now in recovery. Family member, parent, close friend, person used to hang out with somebody else. Someone you look up to and admire. Ask yourself, how is this person 
would respond if challenged with the same situation. No matter what happens in recovery, maintain recovery as your number one commitment. Everything you do on a daily basis is directly solely to recovery. Recovery, recovery, recovery. Act as if. Act as if you want was already done. Act as if you had many years of recovery. What would a person who has long-term sobriety do in your situation? How would they respond? You think we as addicts are somewhat hypnotized? A hypnotist does not actually hypnotize someone, but de-hypnotizes them. So they believe they can't do some amazing feats, but the hypnotist convinces them otherwise. Says, no, no, you can easily accomplish that feat, as I outlined. So place yourself in different situations to reinforce the positive behaviors. Now, I went to an AA meeting in the east side of LA one time many years ago. And it's supposed to be a pretty tough neighborhood. And they were struggling with recovery, just like people here are struggling with recovery. So recovery is everywhere. It's what you make it. It's inside of you. You bring your own recovery with you. So some strategies that change must be positive that you can do is enjoy the act, admire the outcome, reward yourself. Enjoy everything about recovery and growth. We have both strengths and weaknesses within us. Focus on your strengths. Your strengths are basically what brought you to this point in your life so far. Give your strengths credit. Say to yourself that I will greet this day with love in my heart. I will enjoy the sun for it warms my bones. I will enjoy the rain for it cleanses my spirits. Pick something that absolutely drives you up the wall. Think intently about it. Now we'll say what it is and we absolutely hate, but say it as though we love it. I love it when people cut me off in traffic. I love it when people get off the sky train and as they're walking down the stairs, they light up their cigarette smoke. I love the smell of cigarette smoke and I take big whiffs of it as I'm walking down too. What will your life look like when you have multiple years of sobriety? Take some time during your recovery for a period of reflection. I wear the Apple Watch and it has reflection built into it now with their upgrades. You could either breathe for a minute or two or three or however many minutes, but you can also reflect and it gives guides you some things to reflect about. Sometimes you aim at nothing and usually hit the mark dead on. I think that's some kind of, is that Yogi Berra? I don't know. When I do what I feel is enough work, I usually watch a movie at home. That's my little reward. Sometimes we go for dinner to a nice place. Sometimes I just do absolutely nothing. So change must be positive. Another strategy is being is easier than becoming. So what do we need to do? We need to take baby steps. We need to simplify the process. We need to prepare for problems. We're human beings. I want to be a very loud, outspoken person at times. It causes me great stress. By nature, I'm quiet. It's both a strength and a liability. Look at the plants that grow in nature. It occurs gracefully, effortlessly. We are human beings, not human doings. When I got into recovery, all I could think of was first was just to stop drinking. Then I remember what they said at the meeting, so I did what was suggested. I joined a home group, got a sponsor, did the steps, started journaling, started to show my journal to my sponsor, went for some one-to-one -one counseling. I learned a lot about goals. I set my goals and I achieved them. What I did was pick one group where I felt comfortable with this and stuck with that until it was natural time to move on, then I did a bit more research and found another group where I felt was comfortable with that one. There is no perfect recovery strategy. Remember, relapse is all a part of the trans-theoretical model of change. But just know that you will encounter a lot of problems and this can get deeper and bigger and more overwhelming. So rather than wait for the problems to occur, do something first. Do something about your worry, anger, guilt, sadness, fear. Those are what call, uh, somebody says are frozen feeling. They get frozen with us. 
Stephen Covey says, act or be acted upon. A person built a fireproof home in California. Uh, I remember seeing that years ago. All he had to do was, uh, once a fire broke out, he had to go on the roof and water it down to keep it cool. cool. So a fire broke out, and when it was gone, he was the only house in the entire neighborhood left standing. Why? Because he prepared for problems. That's what we need to do. Another aspect of change is slower is better. So we need to establish calm, appreciate the path that we're on. We get so many calls and people coming into our office saying, I need to get in treatment as soon as possible. Some people do not even come in. They want us to get, get them into treatment when we describe the process. So we never see them again of how, how much it takes to get into recovery. So that could be one reason why no one recovers or not willing to do the work. I once climbed a mountain because I was angry and this place was one of the quietest, serene places that I've ever been to. The only faintest sound I ever heard was a jet plane flying far overhead. So that's what we need on our recovery journey. usually don't remember the end results, but how we got there. Like I don't remember getting intoxicated half the time, but I remember what I had to do in order to get intoxicated. What journey have you taken? What do you remember about the journey? We remember the barriers we had overcome. The greater the barriers, the more memorable the journey. It's not how far we've come, someone said, but how long we had to travel to get there. So take the long way home. Another thing that we could do is know more and do better. Ask yourself, what mistakes did I make? What did I do that was right? In what ways can I improve? What lessons did I learn? Or more, better yet, what lessons is the creator trying to tell me in this case, in this scenario? Request feedback. Understand the outcome. Teacher told us about how frustrated we get as students when we have to write a term paper or essay. Stated the reason we get frustrated is that we do not know anything about the topic. So we're frustration to recovery frustrations and with self, frustrations with what direction to take, frustrations with being frustrated, not knowing what a higher power wants us to do. See, What are you thinking right now? Man is the only being able to do this. We can project ourselves into the corner and actually be aware of ourselves. Reflect on your experiences you have with others on a daily basis. Give others permission to let you know when you're off track. In Toastmasters, they have an excellent feedback system. It's not to put others down, but to see how they can and should be as speakers. So find out what recovery technique, group, and method works for you and what doesn't work for the methods that, methods that work for you. Keep on doing those. Seek to first understand, then to be understood. Good method is to keep a journal. But change requires structure, though. So we need to create and develop a structure that you're happy with and that you could employ on a <clears throat> continuous basis. Identify what works. Revisit your plan regularly. Logically sequence the events. Some people disagree with us and say it's too restrictive, reducing spontaneity. Spontaneity actually sabotage, sabotages change, though. A lot of people say they want to get out of the downtown east side. That's okay. But can we get the downtown east side out of ourselves? Alcohol and drugs are everywhere. We can go anywhere we choose. We can go to bars, parties, alleys, as long as we have a legitimate reason for being there. If we have a legitimate reason for going to a party, etc., then we can attend. If not, we should err on the side of caution and not attend those events. We can have an exercise program, one exercise anytime, and one is scheduled. Identify what works for you in recovery, what does not work for you in recovery. Work on decreasing 
what does not work and increasing what works. A for me in the beginning worked. Now I don't attend as much as I once did, but I know that it's still there and it'll still work for me. Keep your plan, your goal, your target or answer before you. Revisit it on a daily basis. What does a construction worker do when building a house? They always look at the blueprints to see if they're on track. We all have blueprints of our life. Up until now, it's been unconscious, but we have the ability to actually draw up our own blueprints right now, starting today. Schedule each phase of your life and review it on a daily basis to see if you're on track. Do the first things first, second things second, third things third. You know, look at a plant growing up in nature or a baby learning to walk. There is a natural order of events and no steps can be skipped or there is no shortcuts. Identify first what is the problem, then seek the cause of the problem. Look at all possible solutions. Finally, pick the best solution. Practice is necessary. Use helpers. Practice in many settings. The majority of recovery failures occur due to a lack of practice. Practice makes permanent. Look at the practicing alcoholic. The practicing alcoholic is a permanent alcoholic. Do you know how much Justin Murnau or Steve Nash practiced? See yourself in details as, su- as successful. If you cannot see yourself successful, you'll never be able to achieve it no matter how hard you try. During my journey to self-improvement, self-esteem, I joined the Toastmasters. I cannot learn everything there is about public speaking by myself. Helpers are called evaluators. They give feedback on gestures, voice, delivery, speech structure, and content. I attended an AA meeting in downtown East LA, and I, in Toastmasters, I spoke about many different things. New behaviors must be protected, so control your environment. Use memory aids. That's what I do sometimes. It's like, oh yeah, I can't forget that. So I put it right in my path. Once a recovery skill is learned, it must be protected. Journaling, reaching out to others, whatever. Learn them, protect them. If you don't want to slip, stay out of slippery places. Brand new behaviors are easy to forget. People talk about playing out the tape at the, until the end. Or they also say that I'll never do this or did that yet. Never forget where you came from. I remember the last time I went out vividly. I remember stepping all over the small bush I planted in my father's grave. If I do nothing, that bush will be my future. What about the opposite? Small successes are big, so map your success. Big, huge plans for a big, huge success equals big, huge failures. I tried to ask Aboriginal Business Canada for a loan to start a huge coffee shop business. It's going to be great. You know, They turned me down flat several times. They suggested I start with a hot dog stand and work my way up. Stephen Covey, as I mentioned, says, begin with the end in mind. Then we carry our mission out on a daily basis. In terms of computer metaphor, habit one states that we are the programmer. Habit two states that for us to write the program. Habit three says, use the program. So make and keep commitments are at the heart of getting things done because we didn't do so in our addictions. What do you want the rest of your life to look like? Do you want the next five years to look like the last five years or next five months to look like the last five months? If so, you have to ask, ask yourself, Why do I believe that I can't? Is that belief based upon a fact or upon an assumption? Am I assuming it? Or a false conclusion? Ask yourself these questions. Is there any rational or reasonable reason for such a belief? Could it be that I'm mistaken? Would I come to the same conclusion about some other person in a similar situation? So why should I continue to act and feel as if it were true if there's no good reason to believe it? In regards to continuity and stages and stability and change in personality, there are many different theories. What is in common with those theories 
or that there are differences among people of different ages, and this helps us keep the lifespan perspective. People's traits continue to change in later life, creating an emphasis on lifelong development. It's also an underlying consistency to most people's temperaments and personality traits. Remember that behavior and feelings spring from belief. To root out the belief which is responsibility for my feeling and behavior, ask yourself, why? Is there some task which you would like to do, some channel in, channel in which you would like to express yourself? but you hang back feeling that you can't ask yourself why. Ask for further questions or feedback. If none, then do your best and just try to figure it out lately. I mean, further on down the road. See this drawing here? We're creating ourselves constantly. And that's what we need to get to. So basically, we looked at the definition of change, looked at three main issues regarding change, we looked at 10 aspects of change, we looked at strategies that we could use to implement a change. Like all behaviors are complex, change is frightening, change must be positive, being is easier than becoming, slower is better, if we know more, we'll do better, change requires structure, practice is necessary, new behaviors must be protected. And small successes are big. So if if you want to reach out to us at iwtscanada.org, you can check out our website, you can check out what we're about, and you can see that there's a book now section if you want to book a confidential one to one counseling session. I might be doing this a little bit more in the future, just changing this uh, weekly podcast session. Uh, if you want to be in on the call, there's a link. You could check it out on our website, on the Facebook post, uh, Zoom. There's a Zoom link. So if you want to do this as a support group, which is initially what it's intended to be, we've tried it on the downtown east side, but because of the pandemic and people and the vaccines and everything and just like we're still working on it but it's a work in progress so if you have um, any uh, good news to share or if we've worked with each other in the past let me know we'll put your testimonial on the website but other than that uh, I guess I could say closing prayer but we haven't been doing that about change and so my prayer is that anyone who stumbles across this and who watches it that they'll be able to seriously consider what we talked about in regards to change and know that it is possible for an individual to change there are some people in this field who believe that change is impossible that if you did whatever you did mistakes that you made in the past you're going to continue doing them and you're going to continue doing them in the future. And that's not what we're about. We know that change is possible. Change, like somebody said, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So change is possible. If, if you go out into the woods and you just sit on the stump, that's all that you stay there for years and months and days and weeks, you will change. Change will happen all around you. The... the, the the wood would rot, the plants would change, the, the flowers would bloom, the flowers would fade. And so we know this as indigenous people. We know that change is possible. We relate to to the environment. We can see the environment changes, change the seasons, you know, change, change in the weather, change in the directions, and everything changes. So... And we're part of nature, so we change. And so we ask that individuals who are stuck in their addictions, even if in their long-term sobriety or abstinence, they're not in recovery, active recovery, we encourage that there's no, it's not too late, get into active recovery. Anyone who's watching this, and we just pray, we lift up our hands to you. 
you pray that you know, if you've had success, if you've had a lot of uh, changes in your own life, and if you want to let us know about that, you could email us, info at iwtscanada.org, and just let us know all the changes that you have gone on in your life, because are you like the butterfly? We just ask that to all those individuals who went through all those t- changes, stages of change, and who've come through and they're completely different because every seven years we're completely new, Lord God. And we know that. And so we just pray that anyone watching this, they may start out looking a certain way today, but we know in, as change goes on that they'll even look completely different to themselves. could be a one year, could be five years, could be seven, ten years, but change will happen. They'll start to change things that used to bother them in their minds, in their heart. They'll respond differently because they've learned differently. They've seen themselves differently. They've mapped out their success. They went through all the changes. They, they, they know that being is easier than becoming. They'll, they, they'll put all these things together and then they'll be able to give back service because they're going to think differently. They're going to be differently. They're going to act differently. and Their behaviors will be completely different. They will even surprise and shock themselves. And so we just pray, God, that you watch over those individuals. Anyone watching this, if they want to become different, that they reach out, they click on the book now, and then uh, we work with them to slowly change things. We're going to be steering a ship. We're not steering a speedboat that could turn on a dime. We're steering a ship because it took many years for these behaviors and these habits to fully embed themselves into the individual's life through our process. God will rip out the weeds. We'll examine those weeds at the root and see where all this negative behaviors have stemmed from. We'll change those behaviors. We'll do it slowly. We'll implement the strategies as we talked about will become slowly different as we age. All my 